the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons, Pre-Employment Transition Services. Shannon McVoy, BSBP Transition Services Manager. We're trying to make the transition process for our students flow a lot smoother. Shots of students listening to a device on a horse farm, participating in an activity at Camp Transition Zone. So that once they leave school and they come to agencies like the Services for the Blind, they have some good ideas of what they're good at, what their interests are, and what types of things they might like to be doing after they leave school. Taylor, a student. The SBP will provide you the opportunities that no other agency will, as meaning employment, job searching, training, seminars, conferences, you name it, they have it. Rachel, a student. There's just a lot of good programs and also if you're in high school and you're going to college, they help pay for your schooling and if you need technology and things like that, they can also help you with that too so you can get everything you need to be successful. Monet, a student. Don't brush off or think, oh, it's too much work because it's not and it's better to have someone helping you than to go at it alone eventually and realize that you passed up an opportunity that you should have taken. Shots of camp activity students in Horse Barn. The pre-employment transition services were introduced by the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act and what the legislation did was provide the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons opportunities to provide a lot of additional services to our students with disabilities. The pre-employment transition services are job exploration counseling, work-based learning experiences, counseling on post-secondary options, workplace readiness training, and self-advocacy skills. The first one is job exploration counseling, which is basically intended to provide counseling and guidance to students to help them explore career opportunities. Things like job shadowing, informational interviews, interest evaluations, and workshops. Student working with counselor. One of the things that our students have been doing when they come to our training center is to complete interest inventories and do some exploring labor market surveys, looking up you know, what types of jobs are going to be in demand when it comes to hiring practices once they get ready to enter the workforce. So that's really important as well because we want to make sure that our students know what jobs are going to be available to them, especially if they go on and get a college degree. We want to make sure that they understand the workforce, look at their interests, and also look at what's available work-based learning experiences. Statistics show that students who have one or more work experiences while they're in school are more likely to become employed once they leave school. Students working in horse barn and office. We want to make sure that our students are either volunteering, doing a paid work experience, having a internship, anything basically where they're out there actually doing work. I just feel like when I'm at this work experience, I have the freedom to be able to go to work by myself without having somebody to drive me and I feel like I'm able to be very independent with the tasks that I carry out. I think the best part about the experience was I had really good managers and if I needed like if I had a question or something they would come and help me or show me how to do something so that was really good. Self-advocacy is one of those skills that is very difficult for a lot of our clients. A lot of the students that we work with have teacher consultants for the visually impaired that are working with them, they have paraprofessionals that are assisting them in school, and so they really need to learn how to advocate for themselves their needs. And that could be anything from once they're in college, how do they get their accommodations from their professors. Students walking to class with leader dog, working on computer, listening to lecture, and in cafeteria. It could be on the job accommodations that they need, or it could just be simply telling people that, you know what, I don't need help with that. And how do you do that when you are in a situation where somebody wants to help you and you don't necessarily want their help? If you don't tell people, they're not gonna be able to help you the way that you might need. So I am very big on self-advocating. If I can't see something, if you're using the wrong color marker, I will ask because in order to get what you need, you have to, to advocate and it's not something that you should be ashamed of. You should be proud of who you are. The counseling on opportunities for post-secondary enrollment is basically looking at what opportunities are available to students once they leave the high school setting. So it could be anything from a two-year college to a vocational school to a four-year college or university. Students in class and common areas. 
One of the things that we do with our students is we have our college prep program, which is at Western Michigan University, and that exposes students to study skills and different skills that they're going to need to be successful once they are in a college setting. The college prep program is basically a program where you get to live on Western's campus. So you get the experience of living on your own on a college campus and getting yourself up and going to classes and things like that. Students walking on campus and in class. Jessica, a student. This is just a great learning experience for anyone with a visual impairment because the campus is not super accessible in a lot of different ways. And so it really helps you develop problem solving skills and coming in with an open mind and being ready to face challenges and being excited about it. It's kind of like going to high school, you know, you over expect what it'll be like. But it's also been nice to kind of learn what it's like to take a college class. It's not as bad as it seems like it'll be. Workplace readiness training, this is probably one of our biggest categories. It encompasses your independent living skills, orientation and mobility travel skills, being prepared for the workplace, so making sure you have interview skills, resume, job seeking skills. Some of our programs like Camp Transition Zone allow our students to do a lot of different activities in a short amount of time. Job shadowing opportunities where different employers came in and talked to them, tried some different jobs through the Job Olympics. Students participating in recreational activities. They also were able to do some team building activities because you have to be able to be a part of a team in order to be successful in the workforce. How do you work together and figure things out? Problem solving, self-advocacy, a lot of the skills were interwoven into the components of that camp. If students are out there that aren't connected with the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons and they have a visual impairment, you know, we would love to be made aware of them so that we can at least offer these services up to them. We want to be able to meet these students as early as possible because we're all looking for the same goal. You know, what we want is for students to leave school, to go out, to live their life, to be independent, and honestly, to not need services like we provide in the future. To learn more about the pre-employment transition services or other BSBP services, contact Shannon McVoy, Transition Services Manager at 269-337-3449.